And happy Monday to everyone. I hope everyone had a great weekend. As you can see, I got a little bit of sun. My forehead's a little red. Um, but yeah, how was everyone else's weekend? Um, if you celebrated Easter, what'd you do? If you didn't celebrate, I hope you did something fun still. Yes, happy Monday, Chris. I hope you got some rest because this week and coming weekend are going to be busy with the charity stream we have going on. So Chelsea's already in the chat as well. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. And Peter, hey yo, indeed. A lot of my favorite people. I wish I could see them more often face to face. At least I get to see Chelsea face to face almost every week with game night. And Chris, just a few more days. And I'll be giving you a big bear hug again. Peter, one of these days we'll actually meet. Hopefully a convention or something like that. Chris is working on the basement as we speak. Got to get back to it, but wanted to say hey. Always love when you stop by, Chris. Love that you said hey. And I'll say hey right back. Hopefully you can get that basement done, because I look forward to seeing what you do with it. Chelsea had a good weekend. Peter says, we will meet. Don't worry. I'm not worried about it. I just wish it wasn't so long, far, so far away. I wish we had conventions that were actually going on. But one of these days we will. And one of these days, Peter, I will get you on camera. I know you like to be in the audience watching, but one of these days we'll get you to join us on screen. Chelsea said it was busy but good. We just finished spray painting 325 meeples. I assume those are for uh, table settings for your wedding or something, Chelsea? Because I know you have some gaming themed stuff for your wedding. And I know that's coming up really soon for you. Um, but yeah, I went to downtown D.C., Walked and saw a lot of the monuments on Easter Sunday. Saw a lot of flowers, a lot of the blooms that were happening. And of course, I didn't use sunscreen. That's why I got a sunburn on my forehead only because I had a mask on the whole time. So, red up, white down. <laughs> Putting the meeples in vases. That's going to look really cool, Chelsea. Can't wait to see the final product. Um, as you know, tonight plan to play Overboss, which Chelsea, we've played before, um, but I did figure out a way you can play with me, even if you don't have the game. So that's going to be fun. I'll go over that in a minute. Um, but yeah, so fun weekends. Sundays, yeah, Sunday's weather was perfect for going downtown. Um, next game to buy Peter. Yep. Uh, I will say it has the boss monster theme and artwork, but what I've read is because I've not played boss monster yet, the, it feels completely different because just the gameplay and everything. So hopefully I don't know if, how much you know about it, but at least tonight you can see it played and decide is that, is this game actually something you want to buy next? Um, but yeah, went to downtown DC. The weather was like mid sixties the whole time. But it was actually really windy, so it kept it a little bit cooler. They had multiple people flying couts out, kites out there that were like, they, they were flying them really high, probably 100 to 200 feet in the air with like 10 foot tails on them. So they're huge kites. And the best thing is the food trucks were out there this weekend. So I got to grab some good grub for lunch and see the sights because I have not been to downtown DC yet so this that was my first time to go and I had the perfect timing for for parking and catching the trains like I bought my ticket walked on 30 seconds door closed get out get down there and then I get back to the station literally walk into the station walk down the steps here comes the train I walk in and it goes off so I couldn't have planned it if I had tried so it, it was probably the best Sunday I've had in a while that I actually getting out. Of course, I enjoy my Sundays and playing games, but you do have to get outside, get some fresh air. So, uh, so yeah, what'd y'all do this weekend? I know you had a good weekend, Chelsea painting meeples. Peter, what'd you do? You do anything special? I know Chris talked about he's reorganizing the basement, which I'm excited to see. 
but yeah, let me, let me know if you did anything. Games. Well, I think we all played games. Not, so I need a little more specifics. What games did you play? I, I really want to know. Fam yeah, family time, of course. Family time's always great. Um, yeah, so Saturday, you probably saw me posting about it on Instagram and maybe even Facebook in my story. I was working on a puzzle. So not quite a game, but it was a Sherlock Holmes puzzle where you read a short story. It's like 17 pages long. You put the puzzle together. You don't have a picture of what the puzzle is supposed to look like. And then the puzzle has clues to the story so you can solve the story. And it's a thousand piece puzzle. So I did not finish it. I at least had a very relaxing day of watching Twitch on one screen, puzzle on the table. Raiders of the North Sea. I still need to play that, I think. I'm not even sure if I own that one yet. So what is your favorite part about that game, Peter? Which I know, of course, it has wonderful artwork. Let me see if I have the box in here. Uh... Nope, I do not have the box within reach. But yeah, it, it, apparently the, it's a puzzle line that they have at least a half a dozen, dozen puzzles of that variety where you read a short story, assemble the puzzle, and then solve the clues. So it's kind of puzzle meets almost like an escape room in a way because you got to solve the mystery, but it incorporates it so it takes longer to do and you can really sit down and just relax as you do it. So I've enjoyed the puzzle so far. It's a lot of muted colors, browns and reds. So trying to sort by color right now is very hard to do. So as, as you saw in my stories, I sorted by shapes first. Even though everyone was like, sort by color, sort by color. I tried. <laughs> it's not that easy. Uh, a lot of variable strategies in Raiders of the North Sea. I love the games like that. Like if games only have one strategy there's not as much replayability. So the variable strategies, variable setups, stuff like that are always great to have in a game. So you can really enjoy it every time you play, which I feel like Overboss is kind of that way. Chelsea, you might understand that because you've seen it. Go heavy main. Oh, you can go heavy Valkyrie. Exactly. Yeah, so Overboss comes with a lot of tiles that you can mix and match as you set it up. Um, tonight I'll be playing the base setup. Um, if we have time, maybe I'll mix it back up. We'll throw in some of the more advanced tiles. But I wanted to start it with the base setup so you can attempt to play along at home. Um, which, if y'all are ready, we can get into that. So first, let's do a quick switch. Yeah, I've really enjoyed Overboss. Um, it is one to five player game, ages eight and up. So it's pretty straightforward and simple. It's kind of a mix between a point salad and a tile laying game. Like every tile, every piece that you grab is going to score your points in some way if you use it right. And there's a lot of different tile setups you can do. So it, the rules are really straightforward and easy. But depending on what you do and how you set it up, it's going to drastically change your points so it's just a fun easy kind of relaxing point salad system but with really fun kind of pixelated artwork from the from the boss monster stuff so yeah of course couldn't do this without showing off the box since people love boss monster this is based on that artwork i will then switch over to this so you can see it better Peter, I don't know how much you've seen this. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. So, this game is... We're going to be playing on the easy mat, which is a 3 by 4 grid with kind of water and stone dungeon around the edging. Now, if you can also play an advanced game on a 4 by 4 grid. We're not going to do that tonight. We'll keep it a little bit easier, straightforward. Keep it on the main setup. Now, if you're playing at home, all you need is a piece of paper. That's all you need, a piece of paper and something to draw with. Pen, marker, pe pencil. Because we're gonna draw the grid. 
So all you need to draw is a three by four grid and then indicate that there's water or stone next to certain sections. And this way you're going to be able to basically just write down the tiles that you place instead of having to have the physical tiles. So hopefully if you want to try to play along, try your hand at beating my score because sometimes I'm decent, sometimes I'm not. As Chris can attest to, I sometimes score really well, sometimes he beats me. Have to put the kid to bed so it will be hard for me to play along. Well that's okay Peter. Um, hopefully you enjoy what you see and what you listen to. I'll describe what's going on and so you can even if you want to come back later, I will be posting this on YouTube. And so you can even come back later, test your hand at the game, play it once, play it twice, however many times you want to see how good of a score you can get. Now, Chelsea, you've played before. I don't know if you're going to be playing along with me, but it's pretty easy to set up and draw a grid. I can use the lurk. Yeah, so the lurk, just do exclamation lurk, because, yeah, I love that you're here lurking, and I want to talk about how great you are, and it's fun to show that you're lurking. So indeed, you are lurking in the background, so let's chat about how awesome you are for still being here, even as life gets busy. So, as you put your kids to bed, we're going to still appreciate that you're here listening, giving me viewership, giving me a follow, being a great friend. And then, if you get a chance to come back, pop your head in, say hi. If you have any questions about what we're doing when you get back, just let us know. So, Chelsea, you can let me know if you're playing or not. But, either way, I'm going to go over the tiles we're playing with in this basic setup. I'm going to try to follow along and working on the base. And what kind of work are you doing on the basement, Chelsea? Are y'all reorganizing games? Are you setting something different up? changing your workspace let me know how it's going but yeah so overboss is a pretty straightforward tile laying game where in in the box there, there's going to come sets of scoring tiles every game you're always going to have let's make sure i get the name of this right the dungeon tiles so there's going to be eight dungeon tiles in every single game along with seven portal tiles and six mini boss tokens. Now you're going to have stacks of tiles that we're going to be mixing up and then drawing new shelf for small games. Are you sure? How, how, how big is said shelf? Because it's going to be from a small shelf to a big shelf at some point, knowing y'all and how many games y'all like. Uh, yeah. So, but dungeons, they always score one point when they're on your board by the end of the game, plus one point for every different other tile touching it on orthogonally adjacent sides. So say you had two different types of tiles touching it by the end of the game, that's two additional points plus the one. Now, dungeon tiles can never have tokens on top of them, but we'll go over all the tokens in a moment. So that's the dungeon. Then we're going to be playing with forests. Now, forests are scored based on the total number of forest tiles on your map. So you see kind of the 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. That's showing if you only had one forest, you get one point. Two, you get three points. Three, four, six, and so on. So the more of those you can collect, the more points you can score. No, you mean it's full? Yeah, that's the problem with being gamers like us who enjoy so many great games we fill up our shelves fast and anytime we buy a new shelf it's immediately full okay and then next we're going to be playing with the caves so each cave has a base value of one point and a cave bordering any mountainous part of the map is worth an additional two points for a maximum of three so on these boards we have the water and we have mountain regions. If it was placed right here, you get the two additional points at the end of the game. If it's next to water, you don't get those two points. If it was center of the board, you also don't get the two extra points. So try, any cave you place on your board, try to put it next to a mountain, because that's where you find caves in the mountains. 
And next up, we got graveyards. Because when you got mountains, when you got monsters, you got something's going to die, right? So we're going to have some graveyards. Uh, they have a base value between 1 and 3 points, shown in the solid white circle on them. The boss with the most graveyard tiles on their board scores 5 points, and the boss with the second most graveyard tiles scores 2. So in a solo game, if you play with it, you can basically gain 5 points because there's no one to oppose you. But if you're playing with multiple people, you want the most if you want the most points off them. Next up, we're going to go over the swamps. They have a little mushroom symbol in the bottom corner, and each have a base value of one point. Each swamp is also worth an additional point if they border a watery part of the board. So in the same way that caves want to be next to mountains, swamps need water to be swampy. So put it next to the water, make them full of water, and you get some extra points for that. And you also get an additional point if it's next to at least one other swamp tile for a maximum of three points. So if you can get two swamps next to each other, next to the water, you're really maximizing your points with those swamps. And then last but not least, for this setup, we're going to be playing the camps. And camps are scored based on how many unique camp tiles you have on your board. Now camps have a colored flag in the corner. That's how you can tell they're unique. Some will have blue, red, and other colors. So if you already have one of these that's blue, you almost don't need to grab another one that's blue. So look for the ones of different colors, because they score based on different ones that you have. So if you only have one unique camp, you get one point. But as soon as you find another unique camp, then it's worth four. Now, these are not based on each tile is worth four. It is all of your camps together are worth that much. So if you could get three different camps of three different types of colors, and all they would be worth nine points, making them basically three points each. So it increases in value for the number of different types of camps you can find. Now, each of these tiles also had little tokens. Now, the portals, we can it's easiest to uh, explain as we go through them and use them, but they basically allow you to switch two tokens on your board. Pick two up and then place two down and wherever you would like them. So these never actually go on the tiles on your board. They go into the bottom of your board. Boss monsters, straight up two points each, no matter where they are on your board. Now, the forest, we have little forest creatures and one gem. Every tile type will have one gem that's going into the setup. And these crystals, or as I was just saying, gems, they're actually crystals, is the correct name for them, or with one point per terrain tile of that crystals type on your map. So say you get that gem, and you get four forest, that gem is then worth four points. So gems are or the crystals are worth grabbing if you're collecting a lot of a certain type of tile. Now, all of these little tokens, if they're on their same type of tile that they match with, which they're going to have the matching icon, they're one additional point. So if you put one of these green forest creatures on a forest, that's one point at the end of the game, automatically. So the caves also have a crystal, and they're going to have these little dragon looking, because in the caves you're going to be, you might just find a dragon hoarding, hoarding gold. So you're going to try to get those into your caves, if possible. Graveyards, we also have crystals, these this time purple matching the tile color, and the tombstone symbol with our skeletons because what do you find in the graveyard skeletons next up we have the swamp which is blue and our little swamp monster tokens hard to tell what they are almost like the little goblin goblinoid type things around these mushrooms either way again you want matching on matching if possible and we have our camp ones now the trick with all of these tokens is when you create lines of them on your board you can you score extra points at the end of the game they're called bands so if i had three in a row of the same type that becomes a band scoring you even more points so a band of just two in a row would be two points but if you can get three in a row that's five points if you're able to get four in a row seven points so not only are you trying to get your 
the little tokens on the same tile type for extra points. You also want to attempt to line up your tokens. So to set this up, all these tokens will end up going into our token bag, which will be right here. Now this token bag right here, I've already put the rest of the tokens in, started to shake it up, but I left a few out just to show off what we're using. And then the tiles themselves also get mixed up. To make this easy on myself, I actually have a small bag. You can see it right here. I've put all the tiles in. So I can easily mix it up super fast just for on screen. But you can shuffle them up at your table, stack them in a, in a line, all face down, and then reveal as necessary. But I'm going to be pulling them from the bag so I don't have to stack them all after I've mixed them for you. So to make this easy, I'm going to put this in the middle of the table. Pull the rule book aside because we know how I know how to play now and I'll be telling you how. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to be revealing four tiles one, two, three, four. Don't need that last one. And four tokens one token to go with each tile. I think to make it easy, I'm going to switch this view so you can see these a little bit better. These do go in a row from left to right because in a one player game, after we select one set, the farthest right one in the row will get removed from the game. So you will be planning accordingly. One, two, three, and four. So every turn we're going to be selecting a set of one tile and one token as they are aligned in this row. And whenever you take a set, you put that tile onto your board wherever you want to. They do not have to be touching an existing tile. And then if it has a place on it, you, you place the token directly on that tile immediately or in any empty tile space that allows a token. Now, so like, say if I took this force though, portals do not actually go on top of a tile. They go to the bottom of your board. Portals can be used once during the game, unless you had a special power, which we're not using extra powers in the bosses this game as we teach it. They go down here and you can use it once per game to basically pick up two tokens from your board, move them wherever you want, set them down. Now, if I was to pick up this set right here, because I would only have one tile, this token would immediately end up going onto that tile until I'm able to move it, say, with the portal or some other special ability. So, right now, I have four options. I have a portal with the forest. I have, we'll call it a goblin for the, for the swap tokens, because that's kind of what they look like. Kind of little green creatures wearing purple. That's with a cave, another cave with a portal, and a cave with another goblin. Now, no, no matter what's going to happen, if I, when I take one, the, one to the farthest right of the row, we'll get removed from the game. So even if I take this forest set, this one will get removed into one, each on, for the round. Now, this only happens in one player game. In multiplayer games, because everyone else is taking tiles, it's going to be different on your next turn. So what we do, we select one, put it on our boards. Now, if you're playing along as you watch this with a piece of paper, which I'll put this in view again, what you can do is just on the on the big part of the tile of, of the grid, right cave or swamp, or whatever it is that you place there, put whatever you place in the middle. And you may also want to create a list of the tokens I'm doing. And so say we have the four right here, create a list on your paper, write them down, cross out what you use, cross out ones that get removed because you may select a different one than I select. So what you want to do, write down all four sets, cross out what you use, cross the farthest right one off the page. And then as I reveal new ones, those will be the same ones revealed for you. So I should start now and select what I want on my board. Um, How do I want to play this game? Well, I might as well take that, take a forest because they're going to be worth some points at the end of the game. Mm, one, two, one, two. 
So I'm going to do put it right here. And like I said, that portal does not actually go on that tile because it is not actually a creature. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the rightmost tile from the game and the token. These get shifted down to the right, kind of like a conveyor belt. Now the same set pieces stay together and reveal two more pieces for each. So now we have a graveyard and we also have a swamp. Now let's see what we draw to go with those. With the graveyard, we have our dragon that likes to be in a cave and our swamp gets a little mini boss. Well, considering it's a one player game and I'm not focused on get, needing multiple of them, taking one graveyard is a pretty high scoring point value for me. So I don't see why I wouldn't like that. Now that swamp's pretty nice because that mini boss is guaranteed two points. Or I can get some cave and straight up start getting points that way. Now, I, th I think knowing that stuff on the right is going to be going out, these will still still be there next round. I might as well take a cave with the little goblin. Now, we know we want caves next to stone, stone mountains on the border, so I'm going to place it right here. Now, since I have two tiles with an open space that a token could be placed on, I can put the picked up token on any empty tile. So I could either put it on the one I just picked up, or I could put it on that forest I already had out. Now, both of these don't actually match what I need. So it won't really matter now, because I'll just probably plan to use my portal later. Now, like we talked about, stuff on the far right gets removed. So I'll remove those now, and slide over. Now, for y'all who are listening, if I'm talking too fast, playing too fast, or you have any questions about the game, please let me know. As you've seen before, I can start to ramble and talk to myself. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's not so good. You tell me what you enjoy. So, next up we have another graveyard with a goblin, and we have a forest with one of our desert-dwelling creatures. Well, like I talked about, having that swamp wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, actually, that I talked about the graveyard not being a bad idea. So I'm going to pull that over here. I'm not going to block off my two water space setups in case I end up going swamps later. And I'll go ahead and place my dragon in the graveyard. And I may just use my portal later to switch that around to get my dragon into the cave. Now, unfortunately, that swamp I've talked about possibly wanting, I'm not going to get to keep because that's immediately removed from the game at the end of the round. So we'll keep sliding these down, revealing more tiles. And now we have a desert with a yellow flag. And we have dungeon so that like I talked about the dungeons cannot actually have a token on them so anytime you pick up a token with the dungeon if you don't have an empty space to place it on that token would instead go to the bottom of your board until you have a free space well I'm liking my best option here is this dungeon, which wants multiple different types of tiles next to it, would work really well right here in the middle of my board, and it has one of our force tokens, that, which I have an open force to set it on. So that's going to be my pick this round. That's going to go right there like I talked about. Since it can't go in that, it can go in an empty space, it's going to my forest, 
and I have to get rid of them right most again. We shift that down now and get two more again. And we have a graveyard and we have another dungeon. And we have one, two. So now we got forest and another portal. Let's see what my options are here. Ooh. Do I want to start playing into the deserts? Looking for those camps. Or do I want to play the forest? I think since I already have a forest on the board, I might as well play into that. And so I will take that force. Now these do not have to be touching on your board. It's just based on the total number in your map. So I might as well place it. Since I'm already starting over here, I have a force creature on that one. I may want to attempt to make a band by the end of the game. So I'm going to place it right here, side by side. And then we end up with of our desert creatures here and again from the right we get rid of slide them down and get ready for two more so as you can see this game play, plays pretty easily pretty fast I'm almost halfway done with the game already and we're not even 15 minutes into it and I'm kind of playing a little slow to talk you through what's happening so, a lot of people online talk about they'll pull this out, play best two out of three or something if you're playing with people. And there's also a solo campaign mode for this game. So, next up we have another cave with the swamp goblin. And we have a swamp with our skeleton dude. And this is kind of what I've been waiting for. I've needed a swamp, because I have a swamp creature already on my board. And I already have a graveyard, but no skeleton. So I believe that combo of Swamp Skeleton is what might benefit me the most. Now we know we want swamps next to the water. And I want another different type of tile next to my, my dungeon. So, with that, I think my best option is going to be right above the dungeon. Skeleton would go on it. But I'm going to go ahead and use my portal. When you use a portal, you flip it face down so the green is no longer showing. And you can pick up two tokens from your board. So I'm going to pick up the skeleton. And... So this may mean I need another portal later because now I have three different things rotating that I need rotating. I think I want to switch... this one right here pick it up now I can place these two down anywhere I want so if I had empty spaces I could be placing these on empty spaces as well but I'm gonna put my skeleton in the graveyard where he belongs and the dragon's gonna to go to the swamp it's the second base best place for him he can eat all the the creatures hiding in the swamp now again I have to get rid of the far right one we get rid of it we slide him down and we keep playing. And we have another desert camp with the yellow flag. That's what we've seen before. But now we also have a, a purple desert. So now that I see two different colors, it may be worth getting into deserts. And we've got a little swap goblin and another dragon. So this is where it comes into effect. Do I want to be lining up more of the types of tiles? Or do I want to be lining up my tokens to make my bands? So it can get a little tricky in this way. And there is a portal right there, which would help me greatly in the long run. So it gets a bit tricky what I think I want to do with this one. 
Do I want to block off my swamp? Do I want to get some desert? Yeah, I think getting some deserts into play here would not be a bad option. So I will place... Well, I probably want to swamp in that upper corner if possible, so I probably don't want to block my upper corner. Do I want a cave? Not really. Yeah, so I'm going to go with the yellow. purple and the dragon this purple dragon is going to go right up here now if anything that's going to help me score a band of dragons I lose that far right tile again like we keep doing slide to the right two hops this time and two more tiles and we got another force finally in play and we have another dungeon. Let's see what kind of tiles we can find. Tokens. We got a skeleton with our forest. And we have a forest creature with our dungeon. Oof. I think that camp is a pretty solid play at this point. Right here into the middle. Guarantee me two different color camps. I'm not doing too great at lining up my tokens yet. See if I can get any better by the end of the game. I already feel like this is not my best game played, but then again I'm teaching, and so I don't care how well I do. Now we got another cave. And we got another graveyard. Okay, we got a crystal. We got the graveyard crystal. And we have a desert creature. Force scored based on total number of forced I have. Well, I could go for another forced. Or I could really build, lean into the dungeon and, and get that forced creature. Because I only have one graveyard. So that gem is not worth as much. Yes. I'll take that dungeon. Place it here hoping I can get two different tiles next to it to maximize its use. Now because the, I can't place this token on the dungeon it goes down here, out of the way, until I ha have a chance to place it, which is a good teaching opportunity, because in a moment I will have potentially two tokens and only one tile. So we've got another tile, we have another graveyard, and then we have another swamp. Finally, the swamp appears. And then we have another forest creature, and then with the swamp we have the swamp. So swamp on swamp seems like a no-brainer here. I've been looking for that swamp. Upper corner, next to the water, next to a swamp. Swamp creature right on it also gets me a band of swamp creatures. So kind of a win-win situation with that lineup. That cave goes away, that crystal goes away. We do the shuffle, do the slide to the right. And I only get to take two more tiles. So this game is almost over, and then I can go over how we score. Now we have a cave and a forest. Skeleton with the cave. And a portal with our forest. Ooh. This may just be what I was looking for. Yep, that is by far... Nice. Ooh. I could switch that back. 
I don't really want another graveyard. Do I want another cave? Tricky now. Yep, I'm going to go for the forest. Place it right here. Now the portal goes down here. But this token needs to go on it. Lose the far right one. Now this next tile I take will be the last tile for the game. If it is going by, it is going by very quickly. Yes, Chelsea. Yeah. yeah, when you play this solo especially, and like myself who's fairly good at focusing on a game, unlike Chris where I have to be like, hey Chris, it's your turn. We can, I can speed through games pretty quick, so I'll probably have time to shuffle up and show off some of the other tiles. Or we can pull out a different game if there's something y'all want to see. So this last setup, I pulled out a forest with the skeleton and a a desert band uh, camp red this time with another forest creature. Ooh, this may have just sealed the fate of what I want to do because I can create. Yep, I think I have to do it. It's 10, basically 2.5H, yep. 3H, yep. Uh, yeah. So, I'm going to grab this camp, upper corner, with this. Now, before I officially end the game, I still have a portal I can use. What I can do here, because I... Portal allows me to pick up exactly two tokens off the board and move them. So I'm going to pick up this desert creature, pick up this forest creature, and then I get to place these two. So I'm going to place the forest and the forest desert creature in the desert camp. And now we're done placing. So now I'm going to switch back to the other view, and we can go over scoring. And all the tiles we didn't use get set to the side. So yeah, in this game you don't actually see every tile that you mix together, or every token you mix together. So it's kind of pressing you luck on, do I wait or do I take now what I think I might want to use. So, I do really like the score sheet here. Um, it's really helpful in figuring out all the different scoring options you have because it is a very point salad system. You have places for players. If you're playing with multiple players, you can write down the specific terrain you played with, adding up the points specifically for those. Any points for your dungeons, which are always in that. And then you score you have your points for your tiles and then for mini bosses crystals you're matching monsters so that means ma monsters on the matching tile any bands basically rows or columns you set that are matching monster types token scores boss scores and total up so let's see how well i did so let me write in the different types of terrain so first off we played with a force i'm just going to put an f for forest and let's see how my force scored. Now force are scored based on the total number of force tiles on my map. I have three total, so when you have three, that's six points total for all three. That's not six points each, it's six for the three. Terrain number two was graveyards. Now graveyards were straight up two points, five points for, for whoever had the most since I'm playing alone, that's automatically five points because no one could stop me from taking first. So that one graveyard gave me seven points. If we're playing with multiple people, of course it's a little bit harder to get that many points off of it. 
So I'm going to score my seven points for my graveyard. And I put that as a G on my scoring thing. Now terrain number three, we're going to be scoring camps. Now this is based on the number of different unique camps or different colored camps on your map. So if you had two camps of the same flag, then only one of those would count. But I have a red, a purple, and a yellow, so that's three different camps for a total of nine points for my camps. Terrain number four will be the caves. Now these each have a base value of one point, and a cave bordering any mountain region of the map is worth two more points. So three points max. I have one cave. It is next to the mountains, as you can see right here. So that's just three points. The last terrain type is swamps that we're playing with. Now, these alone are worth one point each, plus an additional point if it's next to water, and one additional point if it's next to at least one other swamp for a maximum of three points. These are So these are each worth one point, one point because they're next to water, and one point next to another swamp, three points each, total of six points for my swamps. And then dungeons. Scoring one point each for every unique tile it is orthogonally adjacent to. So this dungeon right here has a swamp, has a cave, a forest, and a camp next to it. Four different types is one plus four points. So for five points max on that one. So I'm going to put a little five here because I have one more dungeon to score. It is at the edge of the map. So of course that one side one couldn't score extra points. If we're sitting next to the dungeon, the dungeon does not count as a unique type of tile for itself. So in this case, I actually have camp, camp, forest. So in this case, it's two different types, plus it's one point is three. So that was eight points for my dungeons. So let's go and add up my score for just my terrain tiles. Six plus seven, 13. Plus 9 is 22, plus 3, 25, plus 6 is 31, plus 8 is 39 on my terrain alone. Now, mini bosses. I did not pick up any mini bosses this game. If I had, they would be worth 2 points each. But in this case, it's 0. Crystals. If I had picked up any crystals, they'd be worth 1 point per terrain type on my board. So, say I had the forest crystal. It could have been worth three points, but I have no crystals, no points. Matching monsters. So every monster token on top of its same type of terrain tile will score me one point. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then bands. So we're going to be looking at both the rows and columns. And each straight line of two, three, or four of the same monster type is called a band, and bands are scored according to the size. And single monsters can be scored in both horizontal and vertical bands if you had lined them up. But in this case, I have a band of two dragons, which is worth two points. So I'm just going to write little for each of these bands. So I'm just going to go across. Now, if there's any space in between, that does not count as a band. So that's only by itself, by itself, horizontally. I do have three in a row of these green force monsters. That gives me five points for that small band. Now I'm going to go vertically. No band, no band, no band. Band of two for two more points. So that's nine points for my bands. So my tokens in total scored me 15 points. Adding up my total, that's going to be 39 plus 15 is going to be 54 points. Now, if we had played with boss monster cards, which is slightly more advanced, you could also have a boss score. So that was Overboss by Brotherwise Games. It plays one to five players, does have a solo campaign mode. It's for ages eight and up. Plays in about 20 to 30 minutes, as you, sh as you just saw. I played it about that fast while even telling you how to play. So it's easy to learn, easy to play. And a lot of times people will bring it out, play it kind of the best two out of three, depending on who you, how many you're playing with. But it is kind of a filler game. A kind of a point salad tile laying setup. So that's probably all I'm going to do tonight. Um, definitely played a lot faster than I anticipated. But I do appreciate 
everyone who showed up tonight, hung out with chat chat with me, and I appreciate you being here. So, as always, thank you for joining me. If you like it, give me a follow. You can watch this later on YouTube. Follow me. I am Jaybird underscore the word. And as always, play games and spread joy.